What are three types of crowns that can be 3D printed? Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Griffin, founder of the 3D Printing Association for Dentists, and thank you guys for coming to this video. This is the video series that helps dentists figure out how they can put 3D printing into their practice as seamlessly and as profitably as possible. Hey, and welcome to our video. Hey, before we dive in, please take a minute and subscribe to this channel. That's a the good reason to subscribe to this channel. A, you will continue getting these videos, and B, it helps other dentists find the videos too. And if you get a chance, give us a thumbs up if we're doing a good job, because we really want to spread the word about how 3D printing can help all of our practices and drive down costs for us for the first time in a long time, right? And that can help all of our patients in return. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll get going. So what are the three types of crowns that can be 3D printed? Okay, I know it gets a little confusing, primarily because 3D printing is so new that the materials are, you know, a few years ago, there were zero materials that could be 3D printed for crowns, and now there's a good many, then there are more coming out every day. And so just so we can date this video, we're shooting this video right before New Year's Day, January 1st, 2023. So a lot could change by the time you watch it, but you know, probably not that much. So number one, the first kind of crown that can be 3D printed, of course, the simplest, a temporary crown. So why would you 3D print a temporary crown instead of the way you've always done it? Well, if you're like most dentists, and myself included until just recently, um, you would take an impression of a patient when they came in the chair with PBS, and then at the end of the appointment, you or your assistant would fill up that, imp that negative impression with uh, some, some, some type of temporary crown material, put it back in the mouth, let it sit there a few minutes, take it out, and uh, trim it up, process it, and uh, put it back in the patient's mouth, and it usually does pretty good. And the dentist, a lot of times, if you're not the one doing it, if your assistants are doing it, you don't really notice how much time it takes. Um, what you're gonna find out when you start 3D printing your temporaries, <clears throat> it takes tons of the, it takes all that appointment time where the patient's actually sitting in the chair back away from that and gets it out of the practice, okay? So what do I mean by that? So when you 3D print a temporary, the best way to do it is to scan the patient before they come in for their appointment. Um, so it, let's say you're in hygiene, you diagnose a crown, um, you are going to do, you can't do it today, and maybe you're going to do it tomorrow or the next day. You go ahead and have your hygienist scan the patient. So now you have a scan of, of where the tooth's going to go, where the crown's going to go, and you can take that scan put it in some very simple software. There are two really good free softwares that do this for you. One's Medit and one's Blue Sky Plan, and they'll make some really nice temporary crowns, and you can actually print out the crown in shell form before the patient gets there. So now you're at your appointment, you actually have the temporary crown pre-made. Now, is it exactly, exactly gonna fit the way you're gonna prep? Nobody could know, right? Because you haven't prepped yet. However, you can make it get really close to how you usually prep. You can make the walls the right amount of uh, the right amount of millimeters is so, you know that that you know you're going to prep down and so now you're going to have very either very minimal adjustments or it's going to be a little bit loose but probably not all that loose and then you just fill it with either uh, resin cement like sensitemp which we use at my office all the time or you could you could take the time to reline it it's still going to be a lot faster than if you made it chair side and had to trim it up and shape it up and put it back in and work on the occlusion. Usually the occlusion is gonna be spot on, okay? Uh, it's a lot like doing a pedo chrome crown, except you know it's better, it's for, uh, you know, it's for an adult usually, uh, and it's made out of resin, 3D printed resin, which is cured very well, so it's almost never gonna break on you, right? So that's the best way. Now, what resins can you use to make temporaries? Well, uh, you could use, you know, you can use, there's a Sprint Ray Crown Resin. Uh, this thing is made in Germany, um, and it is, you know, it's for, it says permanent crowns, we're gonna get to that in a minute, but you can use it for temporaries. You can use the Vega Varseo Smile Crowns. You can use those for temporaries, even though they're also possibly for permanents. Uh, another thing, you know, we're all the time using denture teeth resin to make denture teeth that go in the mouth. Well, I'm, you know, hey, look, 
you know, ask your lawyer if this is legal or not, but why not? I mean, it's FDA approved as far as, uh, you know, all the instructions go and it's made in Cal or manufacturers in California. So Denka resin de teeth, you know, that makes a fine little temporary. Um, you know, it's temporary. So, um, you know, those are some options you have. Uh, there's also, you know, another, there's other resins that are made for long-term provisional, stuff like that. But, you know, you can use pretty much anything that's a, a, an approved crown resin for your temporaries, okay? So temporaries, that's the number one type of crown you can make. Now, number two, we alluded to this, but there's a, there's a, there are a few resins on the market now that are actually approved for permanent crowns, okay? The one I just held up, Sprint Ray Crowns one, uh, Varseo Smile Crown, that's another one that's made by Bega. Um, and one we're going to talk about more in a minute, Rodan Sculpture. This is actually made in the USA, in California. So these are actually approved for permanent crowns. Now you, I will let you decide, once you make a few of these, whether or not you think these crowns look good enough. Uh, of course, sometimes it takes a little practice to make them look good enough that you think that they go in the patient's mouth and that's good enough for a permanent crown. Um, but, you know, if nothing else, these are approved for permanent crowns. So if you needed to make a very long-term temporary for whatever reason, they're certainly approved for that. So you can make those. Uh, there's something changing. Let me tell you guys real quick, though. This is going to be a huge change in our profession. Um, and, and just, you know, hey, look, you know, if you're listening to this video, you're, you're interested in 3D printing, but you may be saying, look, Chris, I'm super happy with my milled crowns, uh, my zirconia crowns, my Emax crowns, whatever. Uh, recently, a study came out, uh, this is June of 2022, from Japan, which they're, they're good researchers. Uh, Japan's Tohoku University Graduate School of Dentistry. Uh, the title of the study is 3D printing is more accurate than milling for dental crowns, a study, right? So that's, this says it all. So they, they have proven that the dimensions of the 3D printed crown are actually better than any kind of milled crown could be, and it makes sense. If you've got a, you know, a Cyric or something like that, and you've been doing milled crowns for a while, like I have, there are times when, you know, the burrs just can't go everywhere they need to go to make it as accurate as possible. Um, and 3D printing is an additive manufacturing technology, so it's not the same. It's not milled. You can actually make these things in all kinds of shapes you just can't do with milling. So it's always going to be more accurate. Now, having said that, are the materials better? Well, up to this point, you know, most people that 3D printed the crowns, even with the permanent crown material, would say, you know, they look okay, they look good, but I don't know if they're going to hold up a long time. And they haven't been on the market long enough to know if they're going to hold up, right? Uh, you just kind of have to guess. In my case, I tell patients when I do 3D printed crowns on them, hey, you know, this is a new technology. If it, if it fails in a certain amount of time, I will just replace it uh, for free. And that's the way that I handle that. Uh, so far, so good. So far, knock on wood, we haven't had that problem yet. But, but I haven't done all that many crowns. I've done a good many just for experimentation because, hey, we're the 3D Printing Association. But I still do a ton of milled crowns, uh, Emacs, and Zirconia. Uh, so what's the third kind of crown then? If you've got temporaries and you have permanent crowns uh, that are primarily resin-based, although let me real quickly also say uh, January 1st, 2023 and moving forward, the uh, American Dental Association Council on Dental Benefits has allowed, you know, in allowed 3D printed crowns to be built out as all porcelain crowns the way that I understand it because Inside Dentistry in July of 2022 published an article stating that previous to January 1st, 2023, the definition of porcelain ceramic crown is uh, pressed, fired, polished, or milled materials containing predominantly inorganic refractory compounds including glass, porcelain, ceramic, um, and it's going to be updated to remove the specified fabrication method and simply state refers to materials containing predominantly inorganic refractory compounds including porcelains, glasses, ceramics, and glass ceramics. And the article alludes to, and I believe this is the case everyone believes, that means that some resins which contain more than 50% of the total body of the resin is actually some sort of glass powder or ceramic powder would qualify to be billed out as an all porcelain crown moving forward. Now, once again, you know, ask 
Ask your people that you trust for all your legal decisions, but this has you know, been reported inside dentistry and others. Um, and there is one resin currently on the market, the Rodan Sculpture Resin, and uh, I believe it is more than 50% ceramic powder. And so I personally am planning on testing it out after January 1st and seeing how that goes. So, um, you know, it is a very beautiful material to deal with. Um, so we've, you know, that's, that's sort of a new thing that's come along. And I've been told that almost every single 3D printer company out there is, has a resin in development that's going to be greater than 50% ceramic filler. So they would qualify to be billed out as an all porcelain crown. Um, so let's get to the third type crown. This is really exciting and this is brand new. Uh, but before we get to that, hey, real quick guys, uh, one way that we're trying to make things simpler for dentists uh, here at the 3D Printing Association is just, just to help you figure out how can I fit this 3D printing into my workflow. So one thing we've done is we've taken the procedures that we do the most and that we see most dentists doing the most and we've created checklists, step-by-step -step checklists for those three procedures. Uh, you can actually get those for free on our website, 3dpa.org, download those, uh, and I actually have little videos I shot to walk you through each of the three videos, so, uh, each of the three checklists. So, so guys, grab that checklist, it's totally free, and, um, and we, you know, let's just figure out a way to get this technology in our practice. This is the time. So what is the third top crown that we can make? Okay, now this is something we can't make yet, but it's coming. Uh, and this is going to be amazing. So we talked about the temporaries, we talked about the permanent crowns with either less than 50% ceramic filler or more than 50% ceramic filler. It's still going to have a lot of resin, right? Well, as recently as uh, December 2022, uh, the Dental Tribune published an article by Anisha Hall Hopp from Moscow, Russia. Researchers from Austria, Germany, and Russia have collaborated um, successfully using ceramic, you know, lithography-based ceramic manufacturing. It's a form of 3D printing to create ceramic veneers, and they believe the process is better than existing methods of heat pressing or milling. And uh, if you go on to read the article, they successfully 3D printed um, lithium disilicate veneers at 0 0.3 millimeters. Now, lithium disilicate, hey, that's Emacs. That's what we were trained on. That's those purple blocks that I was trained on originally with Cyric uh, that we mill out in my office as recently as last week and, and fire it in the porcelain oven and then cement it in the patient's mouth. So, and I knew this was in the works, but I didn't know it was coming this fast. But so they have proven the concept. You can actually create a, get a slurry of lithium disilicate and put it into a 3D printer and have the 3D printer print the veneer or crown or whatever you're trying to do in with Emacs with a slurrified Emacs that you can then fire and it's exactly as good or better than the Emacs that you mill out of a block. Now how amazing is that? Now do I know when this technology will hit the market? I do not know. But I do know from industry insiders that some really big names have been working uh, on the slurried porcelain 3D printing I had heard about a project that one of the very biggest companies was working with slurried zirconia. So, okay, this comp this, these researchers in Moscow have apparently broken through with Emacs. Zirconia is probably just around the corner. I think very soon. I think it's going to, eventually it's going to get to the point where, hey, we're just buying the 3D printing slurries from our manufacturers and we're 3D printing the stuff in our office because the technology, the softwares are so good now. You know, if you own a Serona product, you know their software is amazing. These other softwares, Blue Sky, Medit, they're amazing. They're free. And I think the technology is just going to get to the point where it's just very simple. Now, will the manufacturers figure out? Uh, right now, you can save a ton of money. Will they figure out, hey, we're missing out on all this income. Now we're going to make the slurries or whatever so expensive, uh, or the 3D printer so expensive we make our money back? I don't know. You know how these companies are. They're always trying to figure that one out. But I do know it just makes everything in your office work so much better. In fact, once they get the thing where you can 3D print actual porcelain chair side, 
I mean, that is going back 30 years and you're at the beginning of the Cyric boom again, right? It should, it should excite every dentist, except this is actually way better and it's gonna have to be way cheaper uh, than when Cyric burst on the scene. So there's your three type crowns, guys. Temporaries, you guys could start doing this tomorrow very inexpensively. You could buy actually a pretty inexpensive 3D printer and print the temporaries. The permanent crowns um, that are primarily resin or slightly less than 50% resin, you can also be doing this right now if you want to. I mean, this, this, even if you said, hey, I don't want these to be permanent, you could certainly use them as long-term temporaries. And another resin I forgot to mention, uh, on X, this is, uh, this is a good sprint ray resin. You know, that's not necessarily designed for permanent crowns, but it's very strong material. People are already delivering permanent all on four cases, hybrids and stuff like that using that resin, right? Uh, and then finally, we don't know when as the filming of this video, but very soon we're going to be able to chair side print porcelain. I mean, how amazing is that? Can you imagine? And 0.3 millimeter veneers. I mean, that's, I don't know that milling can do that good, right? Because it's going to break when it gets too thin in places. So it's an exciting time to be a dentist, exciting time to be into 3D printing. And hopefully you guys will join us with the 3D Printing Association as we try to move this technology into everyone's dental practice. All right, guys. Well, it's been great talking to you. We'll see you on the next video.